the coronavirus. Aren't you going to be glad when that's all gone and we don't have to talk about that anymore? I'll be ready for it, I'll tell you. Well, we have an expert. I tell you, we got a guy. We got the go-to guy. He is Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, and he is a retired uh, ENT, retired physician, and now he heads up an organization that he founded called Health Watch USA. Hey, good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, Jack. You gave us that uh, silly reason that you weren't going to be with us on Wednesday that you were working on grants. We told Dr. Schaffner that we knew that you were laid up on some beach uh, with a cold drink with an umbrella in it. So you might as well just, you know, level with us in the future. Yeah, I wish that was the case. That sounded much better than what I was doing the last two days. <laughs> well, I tell you, Dr. Schaffner, I know we've had him on the program before, but he is a terrific guest, uh, Dr. Bill Schaffner of uh, Vanderbilt University. So thank you for uh, setting us up with him. Oh, he's just uh, number one, definitely. Yeah obviously very knowledgeable too. So uh, tell us what's up. Well, I think that we've got some real good news and we've got some cautionary bad news. But the okay. thing that I like the best, and this kind of ties into your half hour right before this show, is that of the two hairstylists that came down COVID positive, of course, they were wearing masks, they were social distancing, they exposed 140 clients or potentially exposed. None of them, none of them developed COVID-19. And I think wow. this is a real sign that masks work. And so to me, that makes me feel a lot safer if I go into a restaurant and the servers are wearing masks, the food preparers are wearing masks. That is a huge level of safety. And so that's going to make you a lot safer. And that, I think, is very important. Now it's just to convince the patrons to start wearing yeah. masks. Well, i got to ask you this. How can you socially distance and be a hairdresser? Obviously, you're, you're dealing with the person close up. Obviously, when you're doing the client and you're dressing the hair, you can't. But they're yeah. not having people in their waiting area, and they're not having okay. other people intermingling. So the exposure is decreased a little bit. So they are doing some things, but as you said, you can't social distance as you're trimming hair. Right. Yeah. But uh, that's wonderful. I think that's, that is great news. Now, what about the precautionary yeah. stuff that you have for us? The precautionary stuff is that the rates are going up. Now, you can say that's due to testing, but we're also seeing hospitalizations going up, and we're also seeing deaths going up, and these are in some of the southern states. Uh, Arizona is getting hit very, very hard. And of course, people may think, well, you know, Arizona's hot. That disproves the summer theory. Well, not really, because if you've ever been in Arizona in late June, July, and August, you know it's almost like the winter. You can't be outside. It's going to get up to 108, 109 today. You're yeah. congregating inside and spreading the virus. So that, to me, is expected. One of the doctors in Arizona had just a classic comment. And he treated COVID-19 patients. And what he stated was he feels safer on his COVID-19 ward than he does going out mingling in the public because hardly anybody there is wearing masks or social distancing. And as we've seen with the hairdressers, that is key to stopping this virus. That is a very, very good thing to do. And there is, a, there is actually our people who are shaming people out in public who are wearing masks. I witnessed it this week. I told the story earlier in the week. I was in a restaurant and a couple or three tables away in a socially distanced situation. There was a guy who was addressing a person at another table, and I don't know if he knew uh, this person or not. I kind of got the impression that he didn't, but the other person was wearing a mask, and he said, uh, why are you wearing that mask? Is that, does that make you feel better? Because it's certainly not doing any good. And I thought, you know, leave them alone. You know, they're doing what they think's right. Well, yes, and they're wearing that mask for the person that's doing the shaming, trying to prevent okay. asymptomatic spread. So it's it's crazy. I mean, yeah. we didn't learn from the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic. We didn't learn from what went on in New York City, or we didn't learn what went on in Brazil. Why do we have to repeat history in Kentucky? Why can't we look at what went on in these other places 
act safely and avoid it. And you know, if we do avoid it, we then will have callers coming in, see, we didn't have to do it anyways. Well, that, that makes absolutely no sense. Just look at what's happening in other places. It's entirely avoidable. And right now, the governor's doing an excellent job. But I went around and tried to forage uh, for food and do some critical shopping. And I'm telling you, there are not enough Kentuckians that are abiding by social distancing and wearing masks. I still have people driving by, stopping, talking without wearing masks. When you go shopping, they're not wearing masks. And it is very critical up to the point that we get a vaccine that people wear masks. And on that note, let me do the other bit of good news, which I think is, as you know, there's rendisivir, which is a promising treatment. Eli right. Lilly also has a promising treatment that's coming out, they think by September, and that's being able to give antibodies to the virus that they're making in, in the lab. And that this will give, I think, a really good potential treatment. So that's another extra level of security that you're going to have. So if people wear masks, social distance, come September, we'll have another treatment for this. So if by chance you did get severely infected, it gives you a better fighting chance. I, I think overall things are positive and really it's all within our control. We need to abide by these recommendations. All right, how about the bad news? Might as well get it over with. Well, the bad news was the rising death rates, which I think is entirely within our hands. And the other thing that I'm seeing, and I think that other people are too, is that there's a lot of conflicting messaging going on on some people that we would like to have a stable message coming out. And the most recent example, I think, was the WHO, where, as you know, last week, they came along with everybody else, a lagger, saying, yes, everybody needs to wear masks because of asymptomatic spread. Then on Monday, they said, well, that's probably rare, asymptomatic spread. And then two days later, they were walking that back. Jack, you asked me a long time ago what I thought of the WHO, and I said that a lot of times they become too political. There's a lot of pressure, political pressure, placed on these organizations to do recommendations that are sometimes not in the best interest of the general population. And when you see this flip-flop back and forth in the matter of a week, it really does undercut credibility. And so in the United States now, we have about, I would say, 10%, maybe more of the people that are saying, hey, this isn't that big of a deal. Then we have another third of the people that are saying this is absolutely terrible. They're getting hysterical and sniffing bleach which is a study out of the CDC. And neither of these ends are something that we need to be doing. We need to stay calm, act safely, follow recommendations, and kind of take the middle road. So we do need to open up, but we need to open up safely, not only for patrons, but for our workers. Because if the workers start getting sick, they're going to go on strike. I mean, we've seen this in Amazon. We've seen this in the meatpacking plants. So you just can't open up and go back to normal. It's a new normal until we get a vaccine developed. Jack Patty, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is my guest. He's a retired uh, physician, also the president and founder of Health Watch USA. And Dr. Cavanaugh, you're talking about, before this uh, break, the number of people that you're seeing out in public at different uh, public locations without masks and without any regard for social distancing and that kind of thing. I wanted to tell you, uh, give an attaboy to uh, one of our great advertisers, Dan Adams at Seaworth. I have a friend in town from California who worked for Dan years ago, so I took him over there yesterday just to pay a little visit. And when you walk in the front door at Seaworth, there's, uh, there are masks that are sitting there for you to take and uh, hand sanitizer right there at the front door and a sign uh, asking you to put on, and you go in there and you look around, everybody in there has got a mask, you know, and... Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe like at grocery stores and things like that are requiring masks but not providing them. Maybe it, it takes, uh, you know, an establishment putting them right there in your face when you walk in the door. Well, I think that's very good to do. And, of course, for me, that's critical to get my business. Now, I have to tell everybody I'm well over 65, high risk. So I'm in the high risk category that has to be very, very careful. But younger people need to do this. They still can get sick, but the chances are they're not going to get very sick, but they still can. And they certainly don't want to pick up the virus and bring it home to their parents or grandparents. 
And also we've talked about that children under the age of one can be very susceptible to this. And we've even had a death of a nine month old in Kentucky. So this is a, a dangerous virus and we need to take steps. We know how to live with it safely. We know how to open up the economy safely. We just need to start doing that and taking it seriously. It seems like uh, we heard a lot about that disease that was uh, affecting young babies and young children a few weeks ago, but that seems to have gone away. Has, has, why, why are we not hearing about that now? Well, it's still out there, but it's very, very rare, and that's the thing. And it has okay. to do with a you know, reaction to the virus. There are many things that this virus does that other types of viruses don't do. It affects a lot of the organs in the body, causes a hypercoagulable state, meaning your blood tends to clot, and, and it does that in some people. If you're in the ICU, they anticoagulate you because of that. And so a lot of things that we're learning about the virus makes the treatment a little bit better and makes it safer for patients. But you do get these rare manifestations of the virus, and you need to realize that if it causes that in rare people, then maybe in a bigger percentage of people, you won't get deathly sick, but boy, you'll get sick and may have some lasting problems after you recover. And how long do they last? We're still finding out. I read online this morning that bald men are more likely to get coronavirus than uh, than those who have hair. You know, but you hear all that stuff, and you know, ninety percent of it may be crap. But you but you read it, and you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Well, you've got to be very careful because in the age of social media, we do have some bad actors that are trying to take advantage of the public and purposefully spreading misinformation. There was a study out of Carnegie Mellon, which found that almost 50% of tweets were traced back to bots that had the wow. same type of a pattern of you know, intelligence agencies in Russia and China. So you, you've got to be very careful. You, you've got to look at the type of information, where it's coming from, check it with multiple reliable sources, and then at the same time, remember, even the reliable sources, this is a new virus that we're still learning about. So sometimes as we learn more, advisements change, even though it was the best one that could be made at the time. All right. Well, where do we go from here? We've got a lot of information to cover in a little bit of time. Well, I think the most important thing is, is that we really need to follow and unite around our leaders and to hold our leaders accountable. It kind of reminds me of the old saying from, what is it, Emma Bomback that everything I needed yeah. to know was learned in, in kindergarten. I mean, you have people complaining, saying, I, I want to do this. It's important. Or I want to do that. And then an exception's given. They said, well, they did that. And why can't I do this? It's just like my kids used to do. But it's simple. It's When you cross the street, you use the crosswalk, you look both ways, and you do it safely. None of this other stuff matters because it's independent. The virus is independent of all of these political aspirations and this political leveraging. We had a very close relative of ours that passed away. I have a very small family, passed away two weeks ago. We did not have a funeral. We did not want to spread the virus in a multi-state area. You know, and that's something that you have to choose and choose for yourself, but we need to do this to respect others and we need to have our leaders unifying around certain behaviors that we want to promote. We don't need to have leaders not promoting those behaviors in one instance, but promoting them in another. And we also don't need to have leaders saying, well, you can wear masks now and then. No, if we're going to get through this and open up the economy, we need to wear masks. And I don't even mean open up the economy safely, because if masks aren't worn, you're not going to have the patrons feeling safe enough to come in and shop. And people may say, well, it's those that are over 60. Well, those over 60 have the largest expendable income. Two quick questions you know, from the Auto Tech Service text line. Let's yeah. see if we can do them together. Uh, how effective does the doctor believe that those clear face shields some folks are wearing instead of masks are? And another question, uh, should we wear masks for all contagious respiratory disease? Well, number one, masks will help for all contagious respiratory diseases. Uh, they're not all as lethal. But personally, I think if you're preparing food, just like you wear a hairnet, you may want to start wearing a mask because some of this goes over to 
other types of bacteria and pathogens. That is okay, well, definitely true. What about the face shields? Well, the face shields probably will not help without a mask because okay. you, wanna, you, you want to wear it. it. It may help a little bit on projecting, but a mask is better. It will certainly help you from getting the virus in your eyes, which is one of the things we talked about. Uh, Kevin, have a good weekend. Talk to you on Monday.